Hello once again folks, Jose Rodriguez here. A couple of people have been asking exactly what do I need. I'm just receiving my Pro 100 in a few days, the Pixma, Canon Pixma Pro 100. And I would like to know, as I have read somewhat about the third party options from Precision Colors and others, especially from the UK, there's a good source over there as well. What exactly do I need to buy? There are so many iterations of the refill kit available. Well, first of all, get the one with the smallest volume to start with. In other words, the two ounce bottles. Do not buy four or eight ounce bottles. You need to learn how to do this process first before you start getting into the larger volumes, especially if you don't print often, because you simply will not use up the inks fast enough and you need to have them gone by six months so only get the amount that you will use up every six months you don't want to uh, test or force the bio size that are in the ink base from having to uh, deal with a lot of uh, contamination which will take place every time you insert a needle so I'm going to recommend to you guys the best method now let's look at this a second so here I have three cards one is empty and it's a yellow one that I actually flushed with PSO flush that's why it's so pristine white I actually was able to dissolve every bit of the original yellow which is tenacious it will adhere to those fibers as soon as water hits it it will start to gel up and adhere to those fibers and you just cannot get rid of it simply by rinsing or flushing with water even if you use Windex it still will not wash away so well as with PSO flush from Inkjet Mall and Fulch. Unfortunately, that stuff is expensive. The little bottle is like 20 something dollars. So you gotta use it sparingly. So what do you need? You're gonna need the resetter, of course. And here's the USB type CLI 42 resetter from Red Setter. You get that as part of the kit. You need the two ounce bottles with the refill tip. In other words, the little cap that has the needle on it. That is imperative because this is going to allow you to cut back on the hassles of syringes, needles, and you know the constant dipping into the original bottle getting ink. No, you're just simply going to drip your ink inside the cart. Now you will have to modify your carts. So the best thing to do is, so you don't have to rubber band the original clip like I'm doing here. You need to get these types of clips and get them from precision colors. These are snap-on. They do not require any kind of rubber band. and They're actually very, very secure. They're not that easy to remove. You slip that little flap on there and bring it down to a clip. And this will seal that vent so that they never dry out. They also stand up beautifully, unlike this situation here. This is the original clip that you break off and if you do not have any of those, then you're stuck with these and you'll have to go ahead and rubber band them in place like I have done here. So you will receive your original set of cards, set of cards in your printer. You're going to use them up. I recommend that you buy a second set of either empties from eBay. They're available two to three dollars a piece. Find them. They're there. And then those can be used as a backup unit, a backup set, which you will then refill with the... Uh, Precision Colors Inc. Now you will have to remove the factory fill ball. You will have to plug it in with one of their plugs. And that is going to allow you then to refill. Here is one that has been actually drilled out. For some reason, the person drilled it out. And then I went ahead and took the ball off as a demonstration to show you guys how to do it in a previous video. But you really don't have to drill it. Just go ahead and remove the ball. That is the best option to have. And then you will then enlarge that little hole because there's this little seat right below it where the ball actually seats and seals. So you'll have to drill that out with a 5 30 seconds diameter drill. And if you have a drill press, that's excellent. If you have a handheld drill, just make sure that it is perfectly straight and perpendicular to the cartridge. Otherwise, you may have a, uh, inner walls that will not seal very well against that plug and if you have a leak that's it you, your your cartridge is useless so you're going to modify that now 
you only have to do that once. So once you get it done, you are all set. From that point on, the process is simply, simply as this. When your card reaches low, one card, you already have one set waiting on the sidelines. Reset and refill. You're going to allow that card to go to low. That means that the liquid side will go down to empty. The sponge will be fine. And you can continue printing, but I recommend that you don't do so because you do not want to change the saturation characteristics characteristics of that sponge at that point. If you go ahead and continue printing, yeah, you'll begin to draw air into the upper sponge. And it's very difficult for you to then displace that air when you refill. So keep it just empty, pull it out, and you can either replace it with one, if you wish, or do as I always say, replace a complete set. Even if the other ones are only partially used, just pull that whole set out, put these little clips on it, bring the ones that are already reset and full, and pop the whole set in. You will begin printing again with a full set of cards. That means that it'll be a number of weeks before one card goes low again. Whereas if you basically replace one at a time, remember they get used up at different rates of usage. So one goes down, the other one might be half use, another one might be three quarters, one other one might be uh, one fifth from empty. So you want to be able to not get caught in this constant replacement of cartridges and it will happen and it's going to drive you crazy. These are small enough to begin with. So if you get into that habit of just replacing one cart, you're going to be constantly replacing carts if you print regularly. And every time you replace a cart, you run a purge cycle and you do not want to overfill those waste pads that are located in the Pro 100. I pointed to the Pro 1, but it's the same deal here as well. So you do not want to create too many or necessary purge cycles. So you basically just change the whole set. One goes low, remove it, replace it with a full one, and you now you can kick back for several weeks without having to replace that card. Use the other method that, that Canon actually rec recommends, and you will be changing cards every two to three days, which is ridiculous. Okay, so that's it. So in order to say, for instance, this is already been modified by you, forget about this plug here. This is a CLI-8, by the way that I cleaned. So you're going to go ahead and remove this and you're going to, now you just have a hole there, you're going to insert this in there, you're going to fill it to the top and you're going to let it, let it drain from the liquid side and start infiltrating the sponge and it will begin at the bottom and it'll work its way up to the top. Some people recommend that you plug the vent and just let the cart fill out. You will see that the Liquid side will drop down quite low, refill it again, and then at the end you will have a perfectly balanced uh, cartridge where the liquid reservoir will no longer go down. That means that this has reached the proper saturation point. At this point, you can then plug it up. And you are ready to either put this away until you need it or use it in the printer straight away. So that is it. That is what you would do with it. We're beginning with a flushed cart like this one is. If you're beginning with one that has already been used, not a problem. You just remember it was low, you took it out, and then you have seven other carts that are at different levels of, of uh, volume here in the liquid section. You just top it off. That's it. Remove the plug, top it off, plug it, you're done. Of course, you will reset them prior to that. Because once they are full, they will likely leak a little bit if you try to reset them because you'll have to remove this in order to be able to reset them. So reset them while they're low or partially filled. Reset them, put the clip back on it, remove the plug, top off, put the plug back in. You're good to go. That's it. So get, make sure you get the kit that contains these little caps with the little needles. And they come you can either get them like this, where they come with a little scabbard at the end, and that kind of helps to keep things cleaner. Resetter, of course, and you will need these. So, and you will need this type of clip. That just makes your life a lot easier. And make sure that you get the replacement yellow, so that you don't have that gel problem. And this is what I've done here. 
This is a CLI-8 that I'm using to replace this original uh, CLI-42. I first said that this was a CLI-42, but it's not. I now, I now can see that it's not. But I have actually cleaned the 42s with PSO flush. Works perfectly well. Just fill them up with it, let it soak for a day, and then just flush it out with water, and it comes up pristine white. No danger of those original cards causing any reaction down the road. But if you don't want to go through that trouble or the extra expense of buying PSO flush, then just replace it with a CLI-8. They will send it to you already modified, ready to go. All you have to do is remove the chip from the original and replace it onto your CLI-8 and you are good to go. And that is it. So, hope I answered the question. I know I talk way too much. But you just need to get the kit with the resetter, caps, bottles, and the extra cartridge. And as for your convenience, of course, just one of the a set of these clips here. And you really don't even need needles. You just use this as your dispenser. That is it. I hope you like this. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And until the next time, happy printing. And oh, wait a minute. I just remember, folks, guess what's coming in a week? An Epson P800. I got it for an amazing price from a photographer in Dallas. And she's sending it to me uh, in about, it should be here like by Friday next week. So we're going to have to do some serious rearranging in this room. And uh, the next video I'm going to show you, pertaining to the Pro 1, I'm going to show you what I have on my floor right this minute. And uh, it should kind of uh, shock you a little bit. Alright, so until the next time, happy printing and bye-bye.